15 minutes now, OK, to your crumble. Yep. You gonna be all right, Chef? <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> Elliot's dessert is apple and caramel crumble with cream. Classic combination, apple and caramel, crumble. A little bit simple, maybe. So the crumble's not even in the oven yet? Oh, mate, I mean, you've only no. just started, haven't you? Done the apple. The apple's already cooked. And you haven't cooked the crumble top yet? <laughs> crumble has got to be warming. It's got to give you a nice hug. But also, it's got to retain some texture. The apples are very cooked. It's just going to be like a spoon for the mush, and we don't want that, do we? It went. Doing it in a timed manner. <sighs> Forgot to put my crumble in. But I saved it. I'm happy. Whoa. Where's my apple? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is my type of crumble. One part apple, seven parts crumble. I mean, there is apple right at the bottom, but it's about a centimetre. Because it's so sweet mm -hmm. and there's so much caramel, which is incredible, but it needs that apple, that tartness, to kind of offset it. When you dig your way through three foot of delicious outer crust <laughs> of topping, you do get to some really beautifully stewed apples. You dip that into clotted cream with sprinkles of cinnamon. John the man's a genius. No way! You can't get all that done in 90 minutes. Uh, we'll see. What childhood memory inspired you to cook like this? End of every summer, I used to love going blackberry picking. We'd come back with a glut and not know what to do with them all. Make lots of crumble and jam. How many times have you actually made this dish as one dish? As one dish? Mm. Um, less than one. <laughs> less than one? Yeah. So never? Never. I can't see how we get it all done, but I've said that about Jacob every single time he's cooked in here. You have just ten minutes. Only ten minutes. Please, come up. 60 seconds. Come on, get them on a plate. Stop. You have to stop. Time is up. <laughs> Inspired by blackberry picking as a child, Jacob has cooked a blackberry and chocolate brownie, a dark chocolate cylinder filled with blackberry mascarpone mousse, blackberry and elderflower sorbet, a blackberry tweel, elderflower jelly, and a spherified bramble cocktail. Mm. There's loads of work on there to admire. You're obviously a really accomplished cook. I like the sphere because it tastes like I've got a little bit of light vodka with a blackberry flavour. I, re I really like that. The brownie, because it hasn't cooked, because it's too soft inside, you've had to put it on there and splodge it on. And of course, that's spoiled the look of the plate. It's not great. I'm not sure this sauce is rescuable. That's the problem. It's way too greasy. Right, let's go get some green as well. Billy doesn't like the sauce. I think it's impossible for him to add to that lamb dish, save the sauce, and finish that pear tart. It's got to be realistic about the time he's got left. I feel a bit sorry for him, but what he's got is what he's got. He's going to have to play with it. You have five minutes to bring together all the work put in by your previous team members. So excited to see what Jack's done. I've got a massive amount of faith in him. Everything he's, he's done look, looks absolutely stunning, so... He's um, going to make it look great on the plate, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a breath, take a breath. Wasn't cooked enough, was it? No, it was not cooked enough at all. I'm sorry, you've got two minutes. You're going to have to start putting it on a plate. I'm going. Right, mate, I'm going. <sighs> Time's up. Stop. Stop. There's literally no room here at all.
How'd you do? Bit of a disaster. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, Penny, it must a disaster. <laughs> did amazing. Did amazingly. <laughs> oh, well done. Come on, come here, man. Oh, you guys left me nothing to do. Yeah. I just had to cut it up. I said you would look like a Jackson Pollock. Right? Oh, it's just a shaky look... mess. Fallon. Oh, wow. That looks beautiful. The, the lamb's way under. Well, it is under. Yeah. I thought it was ready. I'm so stupid, man. Oh, Billy, you traumatised me. <laughs> traumatised, yeah, sure. Jane's starter is a take on her childhood Sunday tea. Winkles and parsley on toast, served with pan-fried cockles and mussels, langoustine tempura, deep-fried caper berry, and a saffron lemon mayonnaise. That's probably the best-looking winkle cockle dish I've ever seen. Every little bit of that shellfish is beautiful. It's got exactly the right texture as well, and there's the saltiness of the sea coming from it as well. Your tempura is as light as you like. Your longest is brilliantly cooked. Textures are great. Flavours are natural and they're good. Well done. Jane's dessert is rhubarb and custard. A vanilla panna cotta flavoured with rosemary, with honeycomb, rhubarb stewed in a ginger liqueur, a rhubarb and ginger granita, and a burnt orange and lemon caramel. That's a very pretty, pretty plate. Look at that. It's a piece of modern art. <laughs> The best of dishes in the world ever for me is when you think you've worked it out and you get something that's different. Panna cotta flavoured with rosemary is superb. It doesn't make it savoury, it makes it almost smoky and woody. You've got sharpness of orange, you've got sharpness of rhubarb, and it's a beautiful match. We want one dish from you, a dish inspired by a personal or family favourite. You need technical ability, that's for sure. But the best food in the world has emotion. 90 minutes, off you go. Alex, I like to think of as a country style cook. But what she is absolutely brilliant at is pastry. So I'm making a prawn and crab lasagna, which is like a prawn mousse. And then I'm doing little uh, pastage de gambas, which are little deep fried prawns in a bechamel sauce and then breadcrumbed. Fabulous. Fabulous. Who, who's, who's tried this dish? Uh, mum. <laughs> Poor mum. She gets to try everything. And what, what did mum say? She loved it, actually. She loved it. She thought it was quite authentic because it's traditional, but it's got a new twist on it. One last thing. Not good enough, I'm going home. <laughs> That's it! Stop! Stop! In memory of her Portuguese grandmother, charity director Alex created a crab and prawn mousse lasagna, prawn croquettes, and a vegetable fricassee served with a tomato beurre blanc. That's a very pretty and elegant dish, Alex. Well done. Your mousse is sweet, natural sweetness of that shellfish. There's a hint of chilli in there as well. But that beurre blanc, the butter sauce, makes everything really rich. It's delicious. 